Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different type of video. It's because it's a video that I am dedicating to somebody who reached out to me on Twitter and, to me, reached me at a very, very deep level um, to the point where I had to think to myself about the things that she said and had to agree with a lot of them. Now, I still definitely stand by uh, my, all my statements that I've made previously, especially all my statements about Captain Marvel, but I also understand that there are a lot of people that watch this channel, not just to see me go off on my angry rants, though I'm sure there's many people who enjoy those, but also there are people out there that enjoy me when I'm a little bit more level-headed and speak about something that I'm passionate about, and so I decided to dedicate my video to that today. Not to say that I'm not going to have a few things to say about Captain Marvel because we just, you know, can't get away from it just yet. It has just come out and it is a gigantic success across the world. But this is indeed dedicated to uh, Estelle or at Devil Ponytail. So hello to you. This is dedicated to you and thank you for reaching out to me and thank you just for being honest with me. It, it was one of those things where it wasn't, you know, a, oh, you're, you're so wrong and oh, why are you doing this? It was simply a, hey, this is someone who started watching your channel because of this reason and it would be really nice to see you um, you know, kind of mix it up and, and not just be negative, negative, negative all the time. And I totally understand where you're coming from on that. So thank you for reaching out to me. It really does mean a lot. And so I will go ahead and speak something that I'm very, very passionate about in a very positive way, which is, uh, or rather, you know, passionate about this specific thing in a positive way. However, there's definitely a lot of things that make me angry uh, about some of the reception of it. But that is, of course, Alita Battle Angel. But before I get into Alita Battle Angel, it's so funny because, uh, as you can see here from her tweet, so again, it is Estelle at Devil Ponytail. She says, you know, here responding to some news that Gagan uh, on Twitter at, at, gay, uh, at Gaga ND. Hind, Hinsa 13 so you can see it for yourself. Sorry if I totally butchered that if I'm saying it wrong. But he's actually said something very interesting, and that is that Captain Marvel made $6.33 million on Monday. This is a very bad holdover. So this is actually matching up a lot with what we saw yesterday. This is something that I did not cover in my box office videos, but apparently the Sunday numbers for Captain Marvel dropped about 35%, which is, I think, the most. I think it was reported being the biggest drop for any superhero film on a Sunday opening weekend, which seems to indicate that the film very well might drop a gigantic amount by next weekend. Doesn't mean that it's not going to make giant money elsewhere. Doesn't mean it's not going to do well anywhere else in the world. But it is still something worth noting nonetheless. The reason why I bring that up is because it definitely ties into Alita to the point where he says here, this is less than the Alita Battle Angel hold. And so for those that forget, Alita Battle Angel actually opened to less money than Captain Marvel did. How, in China, that is, you know, worldwide and in China, but it held on much better into the Monday after it came out opening weekend. So that's actually something I think very good for Alita Battle Angel because it shows that people didn't just drop off from it. People didn't just give up on it altogether, and it shows that obviously Alita Battle Angel has something very special about it that a lot of people were looking forward to, were wanting to support, and ended up continuing to support to the point where there is some really good news that I have to report in a little bit about Alita Battle Angel. Not the best news that we could hear, but still good news nonetheless, and it was being tweeted at me yesterday, and I think I'd made comments about it in some of my live streams, but it is something that I want to talk about officially on the channel. But anyway, Estelle, this is for you, and I love how she says, me, encourage Odin to stop spreading the negative also me. Here is the news for Captain Marvel. So thank you for tagging me in this. And also, again, thank you so much for reaching out to me. But speaking of Alita Battle Angel, talking about some of the most recent box office numbers, someone was, you know, there were several other people saying, can you please give us an update, a box office update for Alita Battle Angel? And I was saying, hey, I'm still waiting for some numbers to come in. And I'm glad that I waited because we also got some other things to talk about as well. But as you can see, our Alita Battle Angel, you know, made another, uh, let's see, $11.6 million overseas. It's also domestically over um, up to $78 million because it made another another $3.2 million in the United States, uh, ranking fifth at the box office, bringing the overall total to $382 million. Now, as I've mentioned previously, the break-even number, according to my own calculations, was around $430 million. Now, according to them, and it says it right here, Fox has said that the break-even number for the movie, according to them, was three hundred. 50 to 400 million dollars which seems a little bit low to me obviously they know a lot more about the finances than I do they could obviously just be putting those numbers out there just to try and get people off the trail or just to try and confuse people that very well could happen so honestly I think that's still a little bit too low just based off of 
the uh, the standard things, the standard way that movies pay for not only their production budget, but also the way that uh, marketing tends to go. I, I will always just go with the rule of thumb with that, which is you take half of the production budget, take that and add it to the production budget, and that's what you get your overall total with. And then when you have your overall um, overall gross from any film, you take 60% of that and that's what goes to the studio and that's how you kind of get your break even number. So at $430 million, that would mean it would make not only its production budget back, but also the money it spent on marketing. However, this also states that there are some people who apparently are closer to the inside sources at Deadline who say that it's actually closer to $500 million or more. I think both numbers are wrong. Whenever you get these two types of extremes, normally the truth is somewhere in the middle. And as I said, $430 million is is a pretty, I think, safe estimate as to what it needs to make in order to break even at the box office. That being said, it is getting very close to $400 million, and there is some really good news coming out of these numbers that is going to hopefully lead it to eventually crossing that line. But first, let's talk about a couple of things. First, Alita Battle Angel did indeed cross a major box office milestone by crossing that $300 million mark in the foreign market. It's really sad that this movie did not do as well here in the United States. It makes some sense because manga is something that is not really that prevalent in the United States culture. And it is really sad because it's a great movie. It really is. And it's also sad that you have a news media that will go out of its way to protect a movie that just came out this weekend. But when it came, come, you know, when it came to this movie, which also has... A strong female character and when that was the main thing that was being pushed for in the narrative it just makes you sad because it, it makes you think why wouldn't they go to bat with with this character who not only has a strong female character but is also a strong character who is also just a in a strong movie and a strong story and many i think would argue people who've seen both movies would say no no no, no. story wise character wise alita has the better story so it makes me sad that the media went out of its way, probably because one was coming from a major studio that they knew if they didn't support, they, they didn't defend, they would probably end up losing their press passes, etc. Versus the other where it, it cost them nothing. It was no risk to them at all if they went after this movie because it, it was coming from, you know, it was still coming from Fox. And obviously that is going to be taken in by Disney, but it, it was much less of a risk for them to go after this film than it would have been if had they gone after Captain Marvel. They would have been raked through the coals from the, not only uh, Disney, but also from their own peers because it would have been in their own minds and their own opinions, them feeding the trolls as it were. So it is really sad because I think that had Alita gotten as much praise and as much respect as Captain Marvel did when you know just from reading the reviews that it has so many flaws to it, Captain Marvel that is, then you would honestly expect this movie to have probably have done just a little bit better at the box office. It just really does, to me, show this bias, this inherent bias that exists where certain films are chosen and protected, not just Captain Marvel, but a lot of films are chosen and protected and treated in a certain way, but then other films are treated much more harshly, or I would say you could easily say maybe even much more fairly or, or much more accurately. So basically people not making things up. But it's interesting is that they'll go after this movie for various things, but some similar issues that exist in Captain Marvel and other films, they ignore or they make excuses for. It's just really uneven overall, and it's really sad because Alita Battle Angel is overall talking to people who love this film, which is a large number. Again, obviously, it's not the number of people and the fans of the MCU that's showing up for all the MCU films, but it's still a very strong, passionate, uh, passionate base. It kind of reminds me a lot, actually, of a, another franchise, Blade Runner. Blade Runner was not a huge, giant, you know, financial success, and yet it gained a huge cult following in the later years when later um, releases of the film came out, and it came to the point where it was so popular among these cult fans that it got it merited a sequel years later, and that movie was great, and even that movie didn't get any love from the box office, didn't make money, lost money at the box office, and it was an amazing film. What's great about this film, though, is that it's doing well enough to justify, in my opinion, a sequel because they just recently announced that Edge of Tomorrow, or Live, Die, Repeat, whatever name you want to go with it, is getting a sequel. That movie costs a little bit more than Alita did and made less than what Alita did. And about, you know, it still took them, you know, about seven years or so to finally announce a sequel, but it still got one nonetheless. So I think that the hopes for a sequel are very, very high. And it's interesting that the media, again, continue to not really want to go and bat for this film. Yes, we're going to be honest about the box office numbers. It has not broken even yet, according to I would say modest estimates, because it still needs to make 430 million to that break that eat, you know, to get to that break even point. But then you have articles like this that show, oh, there's really not much support around it. Oh, Alito is probably not going to make enough to get a sequel. And again, 
this might be based in reality, but had this been another movie with another message, I guarantee you that you would have had a very different perspective from this person writing this article. You would have had a very different take on it altogether. You would have had a much more defensive article. You would have had someone going out of their way to try and say, this is why it should get a sequel. Well, this movie should get a sequel. Not only does it set up for one, but it builds a world and builds a universe that is bringing a lot of people together. You know, you could say that about almost any film, but really this one has such a small, because really when you talk about the box office, it, it is still small, but passionate fan base that, that love it, that, that aren't just praising and supporting this film out of, out of hatred. I mean, if anyone ever thought that the whole Alita challenge thing that was going on was, was out of hatred, I mean, just because someone might be angry or, or, or must, might show anger or frustration towards one franchise or one movie that's coming out doesn't mean that the whole reason why they're supporting the first film in the first place is because of, of hatred. I, I've been on this movie's track ever since I first saw it, before Captain Marvel had even come close to coming out yet at that point, before we really even knew a whole lot about what was going on. This was a movie that I found out about because of my subscribers saying, hey, go see this movie. It doesn't have any identity politics in it. It's just a good story. And that's why I think this movie has captured the hearts of so many people because, yeah, it's not making the money that people would, you know, oh, yeah, you could, you know, you could say all the nice things you want, but it's still not going to make any money. Well, okay. How much money a movie makes doesn't mean that, it, you know, it's a good movie. There are plenty of films in history that have been remembered as classics that did not make a whole lot of money. Some people oftentimes forget that movies, for example, like It's a Wonderful Life, when they first came out, were not as well received as they are now. We're not the classics that they are seen now. I see Alita Battle Angel having that type of potential because of the story that it tells. I'm not trying to compare this to a, a, a classic and say that it, this is as good as, as a modern classic, or rather as the, the example that I just gave. But I am saying that I think that the passionate fan base is going to be enough to really do push this ahead to a sequel. And one of the many reasons why, and this is the good news that I was getting to before, is the fact, and I can confirm this now based on several sources that I've looked to, but this one says it most clearly because it says it in English without having to use Google Translate. But it says here very clearly that Alita Battle Angel has indeed gotten an extension in China. This is something that is very rare for American films to do. So if you don't know, oftentimes what happens is that in China, not only do they make deals with the studios to only give the studios about 25% or so of the box office returns, which is why even if the studio makes a crap ton of money, even if the movie makes so much money in China, the studio is only going to only going to end up getting around 25%. But this is very good news nonetheless because it's done very well in China. The Chinese audiences have supported it. Yes, the support has gone down, but the fact that the support has been high enough to the point where they're willing to let this be out in theaters for another month. So now it's going to be playing until uh, rather until and through April 21st. That's a good thing because the longer this movie is in theaters, it means the more money that it can make and it means the closer it can not only get to that 400 million dollar mark but also to that $430 million mark. And now, do I think it's going to make $430 million? Probably not. Sadly not. But the closer it gets to that $430 million, the more likely it is that it's going to get a sequel. Robert Rodriguez has already gone on record saying, I want this movie to get a sequel. I am on board to do a sequel. It all depends on James Cameron as the producer and if he'd be wanting to go forward with the project. And I think that because of the fact that there is a passionate fan base, because of the fact that it has now gotten this China release, and it's gotten rather this China extension, which I, said, which I said before is a very rare thing for an American film to do because the other part of the contract is not just 25%, but also it means it only gets four weeks to make money. Sometimes they actually will pull it out of theaters. In the case of Solo Star Wars Story, they actually cut that one out after, I want to say, two weeks because it just wasn't doing very well. If Alita is doing that well to the point where they will give it another month, or at least they'll you know, offer another month to it, I think that's a very good sign that it's still being well received. It has high ratings among the uh, the people of China, and also too, it's still making you know money. Maybe not crazy money like it was when it first came out, but it's still making money nonetheless, and I think that's a good thing. I think that this is something for us to look forward to, and I think that this really does truly show that we do have a voice, that the hashtag Alita Challenge was not something that was simply out of hate, that people like Scott Mendelson, who said the Alita Challenge fails, well, it depends on what you meant by Alita Challenge. Many of us just said, hey, instead of going to support this giant blockbuster film made by this giant studio, why not just go out of your way to support this smaller film? Yes, it was made for a lot of money, and yes, I know that Fox is still a giant studio, but still, a smaller film with a smaller fan base, instead to support that film instead. And guess what? People still saw it. It still made millions of dollars. It still made at least $3.2 million after being taken out of 700 theaters. It dropped out of 700 theaters and still made over $3 million. And I think that's still damn impressive. 
because when you think about how many people wanted to see this movie but couldn't, physically couldn't see it, I imagine that this film probably could have made more. Now, I'm saying it would have bro broken records or it would have broken even because of it. No, but what I'm saying is that the Alita Challenge was successful because we have now a release in China. We have an extension in China. And we are getting ever closer to that $40 million mark. And now many prognosticators say that it will indeed, at the, by the end of its run, reach $400 million. And that's a good thing. Because the closer it is to that 430 the easier it's going to be for it to make that money back in DVD and Blu-ray sales. Because I'm already talking to so many people who are like, I'm going to buy this day one on 4K on the 3D if there's one. I'm going to buy the books. I'm going to do everything I can to support this film. Because guess what? All of that money goes towards it. So even if, that, even if the movie does indeed lose some money, it will still have made enough to be able to offset any costs that it might be able to make up in the DVD and Blu-ray sales overall. So there's a lot of hope for Alita at this point. This extension in China is a very good one. We have no confirmation of a sequel yet, but I think that it's something that we can all look forward to. And even though the media is going to, over the next couple of days, do nothing but try and make excuses for a film that arguably and objectively speaking is just not as good. Oh yeah, look how it says, you know, right here, Marvel, Marvel's Ca Captain Marvel isn't the best, uh, isn't even in the MCU's top 10, but it works. Once again, this is supposed to be journalism. This is supposed to be people not having opinions on things, and yet they're going to bat for this film. Again, oh, the box office is gigantic, and, and it all but ensures a sequel. Can you have these so-called media sites going to bat for it, and yet when Alita came out, they didn't come to bat for it. Now they're still, even just yesterday, saying, oh, yeah, it's not going to make enough probably for a sequel. Again, why not support this film? It's got this extension in China. It's crossing milestones, over $300 million at the, at the foreign box office, which is very good. It's still making money here in the United States. It's going to probably end up around 85 to $90 million by the end of its run domestically. And I would say probably getting very close to $310, $320 million by the end of its run overseas as well. And if we can just get it to that point, if we can cr get it to cross that $40 million point, it's going to be a lot easier for this film to be justified to get a sequel. And if any movie justifi is justified to get a sequel, I believe it's this one. Everyone can talk all they want about, oh my gosh, this is this is the greatest thing ever because of the agenda attached to it. And you can go down that route and go down that rabbit hole and you can protect the film all you want. And you can mock the people who are being critical of it, who are saying, hey, there's a lot of problems here. and This is not what we want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand by this film. I'm going to stand by Alita. I'm going to support this film continuously as much as I can. And I'm going to do everything that I can to try and make sure that a movie that arguably speaking, is of higher quality, gets the sequel that is already being called for, for another. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this movie. I know it's a little bit different than normal. I know that I'm a little bit toned down. But as I said, this is indeed dedicated to Estelle. Obviously, I did have to talk about Captain Marvel a bit because it is, I think, relevant to the discussion about how one movie that's well-written, that's well-crafted, that's well-put together, is just kind of put to the side and, and treated like nothing and then a movie that comes out that is arguably flawed, has plot holes galore, has so many issues with it, is praised and protected, and it just makes me sad. But as as Estelle even says, she's encouraged me not to be negative, and I think that I've been pretty, you know, I think I've been pretty positive or at least more neutral than than than, than I usually am. And uh, but she also, of course, says, but here's some Captain Marvel news. And hey, kudos to Alita Battle Angel because if there's anything that we can say about Alita Battle Angel, she deserves the spotlight. And if we can just get the spotlight here, that it performed better, that it had a better drop-off than a gigantic film that's probably going to make a billion dollars at the box office in its Monday after its opening weekend, hey, I'll take any win as I can get it. So again, dedicated to you on Twitter. Also dedicated to all the fans of Alita Battle Angel and also all the fans of the channel who've been so supportive of me and have been with me, especially yesterday after all of the trolls just fell onto this channel and so many other channels, mocking and making fun of and doing all these things. That it's it's interesting how all of a sudden people are calling you trolls while they themselves are living up to the very definition of what a troll is. We're living in interesting times, but <clears throat> what I can say is that Alita Battle Angel is worth seeing. And as I've said constantly before, go see this movie. For no other political agenda, for no other nefarious purposes, go see it to support a good movie with a passionate fan base that just wants a good film with a good character to get a second chance to maybe get marketed a little bit better, to maybe be able to change the minds of other people in another film. And continue this story that so many of us have just fallen in love with. And again, shout out to all those people out there 
who still believe in it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, smash that like button, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe. I know, again, this is a little bit different than normal, but seriously, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. And thank you again, Estelle, for reaching out and for trying to remind me that, yes, indeed, there is a time to be angry. There is a time to go out of my way to try and call out all the nonsense. And that's not going to stop. But there's also a time to step back and think, what are some things that I really want to support? What are some things that I really want to push forward? I am indeed the critic who is a cynic. So, I mean, it kind of comes with the name that I'm going to be cynical most of the time. But it is nice and refreshing to speak a little bit more calmly for once. So thank you so much. And all guys, also, seriously, guys, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.